Now they know they could have given us a little bit more for this finale. Hi friends, I'm Aura. If this is your first time seeing my face, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and also like the video. I'm trying to get pushed out to as many home pages as possible. I'm back. I'm sorry. Not even going to stay on it too long and address it. I'm back. So we're going to be talking about Martha's Vineyard, all the episodes that I missed. We're going to do it in one video. One. That's it. So episode seven, I was deeply disturbed by the housemates not supporting Nick on his 5k. He said that he's done like 10 of these. So that leads me to believe that everybody knows that he does this and it's something that's important to him. And so for no one to have supported him on that um on that run it was really disappointing to me like even if y'all had been up all night and drinking and stuff y'all could have still got up y'all could have at least told him you know good luck or whatever but no one supported him i didn't like that it put a bad taste in my mouth i was i was just very like really really also Bria was completely insufferable this episode but I mean like what else is new like do we expect much more from Bria so in this episode Alex is throwing did I say Alex I might say Nick 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 is who we've been talking about so if I said Alex my bad Nick is throwing a party in honor of one of his line brothers that passed away unfortunately um so He's trying to get the house ready because the house seems to always be a mess when there's like what eight how many people live in the house it's well are in the house for two weeks all grown folks it's a bunch of them in there all grown but the house is always a wreck so he's trying to get you know give everyone a signed job to get the house nice and clean so that when their company comes over it's presentable he asked Bria to clean the bathrooms. She had an attitude about that. That's all he asked her to do, clean the bathrooms. The bathrooms aren't that big from what I look, from what I've seen. He asked her nicely to clean the bathrooms. She had an issue with it. She said nobody helped her for her event. Bravo, like they always do. Roll back the footage of everybody giving a helping hand to her for her event. Is there something going on with Bria, like mentally, like, is it a mental illness? Like, what is wrong with this girl? There's something wrong with her. She's very off. She can't seem to remember events that have happened. She's always on the defense. She's always bratty. She always walks away when things get too hard. What is wrong? What's the issue? She asked your niece to help her. Why do you need your niece to help you clean the bathroom? Why? So they go upstairs or downstairs and they start they're about to start cleaning, but Bria is talking cash about cleaning the bathroom. Say, I don't clean bathroom there. Why couldn't you say that when you were downstairs? See, I would have more respect for her if she would at least done that. But no, you wait till you have an audience that's on your side or in your favor to start talking trash. You couldn't say none of that to him. You don't clean bathrooms. Well, guess what? You're cleaning bathrooms today because you're grown. Natalie. Natalie. Natalie was introduced onto this show or brought into this house to sow seeds of discord she is an agent of chaos she my analysis of her she doesn't like black people she thinks that she's better than black people yet she's intimidated by the black women in that house she doesn't like them. However, she loves the drama. She lives for it. Because anytime there's some sort of dissonance going on, 
while, while she was there, she's somewhere in the mix of it. Why is she relaying information to Jordan about something that Summer said? These people don't know you. They don't know you and it doesn't seem like they really like you either. So I'm, I'm trying to understand why she's in the mix of all of it. It doesn't make sense to me. And you look desperate. We can all see straight through you. I think you thought that you were going to come onto this show and make a bang so that you could secure a spot on the next season, but you have no place here. Amir hardly has a place here. And if he doesn't come back next season, what do you do? Because I heard he's been threatening that if Natalie's not able to come and be a main cast member, which why would she be, that he's not coming back. Cool. We don't need you back here because everyone on this show, aside from you, seems to be very secure in their blackness. Granted, you didn't grow up being raised by a black parent, so you don't know anything about it. But as an adult and where you are in your life now, it doesn't seem like you want to know anything about it or be a part of it except for being on TV. So you don't need to come back. We don't, we don't need to see you back and if if you want to be on something like this maybe you should just go to the regular summer house because i think you'll fit in a lot better over there not over here and the last major topic of this episode was what i like to call flamingo gate simon while at nick's party was having himself a good old time and decided to put on an inflatable flamingo come downstairs and party and said flamingo now Bria was obviously very upset by this, very angry, wanting him to leave, go back upstairs. But something tells me this is not the first time he's put on this flamingo outfit during a party. It's not the first time. Actually, I believe this is what he does. This is what he likes to do. And Bria, you know that. You're the one that wanted to be with this man. You know how he is. Y'all have been together for a while now, a good little minute. You know how he operates. You should have known as soon as you saw the flamingo outfit in his luggage that he was pulling that thing out. This should be no shock to you. This is who you've chosen to be with. But I, I Simon doesn't really know how to behave himself at events like this especially events that are our events he parties like how he parties like a white boy and you know that's just not something that we do so he had to go upstairs and take his little um flamingo get up off and when he took it off he must have farted and it stunk up the whole place it was like a fart bomb I was just mortified watching that scene. Completely mortified. Like, that is disgusting. And you know, he probably farted in that thing so many times and didn't care because he didn't think he was going to have to take it off. But as soon as he took it off, y'all remember that green smoke that was coming out of SpongeBob's mouth when he thought he was ugly but really his breath stunk? That's. Yeah, that's what was coming out of that flamingo outfit when he took it off. Just ridiculous. But I also believe that Simon probably stinks anyways. Like he's just a stinky person on a regular. And I really feel like that room where him and Bree are sleeping is just funky. It looks funky, don't it? With him laying in the bed, he just looks funky all the time. Just, ugh. Leave your comments down below about episode seven. We're going to move on to episode 8. So, we're still at the party, Nick's party, and Bria and Simon are upstairs. She seemingly is breaking up with him because of the whole flamingo, shabam, whatever. Like I said before, Bria is insufferable. She's ridiculous. She's a drama queen. You know how this man acts. 
This is not the first time he's done something like this. I know that for a fact he was way too comfortable putting that flamingo outfit on and going downstairs and having him a good old time. You, there should be no shock for you. If I'm not shocked and I don't even know this man from a can of paint, you definitely shouldn't be shocked. What's going on? Amir and Bria start talking, but the both of them are so drunk that the conversation was just useless. It was absolutely useless. I was like, why are we watching this? Why did this make the show? Y'all could have scraped this, scrapped this, sorry, completely scrapped this and given us a little bit more on the finale because this was just stupid. It was stupid. Two drunks talking to each other, trying to make sense. Dumb. So the next day, Bria, Shanice, Noel, and Natalie go out onto the hammock and they're talking. Why is Natalie there? Why is she still here, actually? Why? She's, it seems like she's been here too long. She's trying to make as many episodes as possible because like I said, she's trying to make a bang. Bravo. Don't bring this heifer back. Do not bring her back. She's not a fan favorite. We don't like her. Don't bring her back. Sign management. So they're on the hammock talking, just basically debriefing um, the night before, talking about what went down and stuff. And then they get on the subject of Nick, saying how he's handsy, flirty, eyes roaming, all of that, all in front of Natalie. Again, why? Why? So Natalie has the bright idea, oh, Tej is my friend, so I'm going to tell her this. Tej is not your friend. And we find that out later on in this episode. She's not your friend. You two are cordial at best. But like I said, she is an agent of chaos. She came to sow seeds of discord. She wanted there to be mess, black mess. That's what she wanted. She wanted to be all in the middle of it. Why? We don't know you. We don't want you here. You don't belong here. You don't have a place here. Why? And why Noelle, Shanice, and Bria are y'all talking to her about this stuff? Why do y'all think that y'all can trust her with this information when this is a person that all of y'all have known? Well, maybe not Noel, but Bria and Shanice, y'all have known Nick way longer than Natalie has. What's not clicking? Why, like, why did that make sense for y'all to do? What, what's going on? So Bria and Simon end up talking about the night before. Going into this scene, I already knew, you know, they're gonna hash out whatever they gotta hash out, but at the end of the day, they're gonna still be together and hug and kiss it out because that's the cycle that Bria goes through when she has these falling outs with people, from what it seems to me. But she basically felt like she let Simon know, you know, he's blind to racism because she's had to deal with a lot of racism while she's been in Germany. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised he said that, or she said that his cousin or his sister asked him or told him, I didn't know you like indigenous people. How stupid are you? Indigenous people? I'm gonna need you to go to the library. No, you don't even have to go to the library. Pull out your phone and look up indigenous people. Because what are you talking about? Just ridiculous. If you're going to be insulting in that way, you could at least get the words right and know what you're talking about. Like I said, they hug it out, kiss it out. They're not going to break up. She's not going to break up with him. He's got the bag and she wants the bag. So they have lunch or I think dinner after everyone goes bike riding or whatever. And Natalie decides that now's a good time to approach Tasia. She said, Tasia sitting over there like, like, why does this want to talk to me? What does she need to talk to me about? So she gets up and 
Natalie gets up and says, you know, can, you want to talk to me for a bit? Tage is like, about what? Depends. What's it about? Just some things that I've been hearing and I don't want you to be blindsided. I'm getting ready to go home. I don't need to hear anything that you have to say, honestly. And I feel like if Tasia and Natalie were friends, for real, like Natalie's trying to make a scene, seem like Tasia probably would have gotten up and spoken to you. But she basically, she did one of these <laughs> to her. We don't do that to our friends. At least I haven't. I've never done that to any of my friends. She shoo shooed her away. Like, I just want to know how did Natalie think that was going to go? Why, why don't you go back home, get on the next thing smoking or flying out of Martha's Vineyard and go sell your $2 million houses like you've been doing? The reality world or the black reality world is not for you, honey. We don't want you here. You can't sit with us. You can't. Go on home. Tasia wasn't here for any of it. And Nick was sitting there looking like, what is she doing? Like, somebody get, America, come get your girl. Because we're about to have some problems. So Tasia's like ready to go. I feel like something had to have happened behind the scenes because it seemed like she knew what Natalie was about to tell her. She was very offended by it. And she just was ready to go. Nick gets her and Donald and takes them to the airport and is texting Natalie like what was going on with that like Tasia didn't appreciate any of that so Amir is coaching Natalie telling her what to say and Amir you're not a real friend at all because she should have told your girl to mind her business she had nothing to do with this it was none of her business at all fake friend so He's pretty much coaching her, telling her, you know, just let him know that there were things being said about him behind his back via Bria, Shanice, and Noel saying that he is handsy, flirty, things of that nature. So now Alex is, not Alex, why do I keep getting them mixed up? Nick is fired up at this point. He is hot and ready to have a conversation because being accused of being handsy and inappropriate is not a good look for someone that's in the professional world and that isn't exhibiting that behavior for real for real it's not a good look he still has a real job that he has to go back to this show while it is a blessing it's not the only thing paying his bills I can guarantee that. So for this to be going around, it's an assassination of his character. And it's not right and it's not fair. And he actually already addressed this with Jordan and Summer towards the beginning of the season. And we haven't seen anything else regarding Nick being handsy since then. We haven't. And Summer and Jordan basically in so many words say you know he's it's not inappropriate but it's just something that he should be mindful of because he does have a girlfriend yeah we're his homegirls but he has a girlfriend and i don't think she would appreciate that so for shanice bria and noel to be saying this he's hot and he can he honestly can't believe it because he doesn't i haven't seen anything and if if it was happening bravo would have rolled the footage of him being handsy with them does he look yes but shanice you're always undressed why why are you always undressed in front of a man in a relationship have some decorum put the drink down and have some decorum so when they get back to the house he's ready to you know um, approach all of them and figure out you know what's going on and he really went off on Noel because this was really coming from left field from Noel because he hasn't done anything of the sort with Noel and he said that she wanted to be included and says it is coming off like you did 
you were a fan favorite up until this point. And I know you probably are trying to solidify your spot on the show, but this is not the way to go about it. It's not. Because he has a lot more to deal with and think about with these accusations when he has to go back home to his job and people are at his job watching this show and he's being known for being handsy and with a wandering eye. He has to go back to Tasia who's going to be watching this and from what I hear I don't think they're together anymore. And if it was because of this situation, y'all should feel terrible. So kind of moving into the, the final episode, Nick and Bria are like arguing, going back and forth. Bria being the insufferable, sorry, the insufferable person that she is, is egging him on, telling him, let it out, let it out. Just being rude and disrespectful. And then when things got a little too hot in the kitchen, what did she do? Class. What did she do, class? Right, she gets up and she leaves, like she always does, because she can't handle it. She likes to start stuff, and then when it gets a little too hot, she she leaves. Mental illness, something's not right with her at all. And I did find it interesting how Amir was in his confessional saying, I'm glad that uh, Nick was bad at Bria and not Natalie, because he wouldn't be talking to my girl like that. What are you going to do? What are you going to do, Amir? I would love to know. Bria goes upstairs and then Alex goes up there to try to get her to come back down so that they can have a real conversation and squash this. So he's able to get her to come back downstairs. Nick, who's a stand-up dude, apologizes for raising his voice. Bria apologizes and I guess everything's all good now. But I've come to find out that that conversation was actually like three hours long because Preston did an interview with the Brooke Ashley and she um, he basically was saying that he wished that they would have aired more of that because it wouldn't have seemed like oh okay I'm sorry I'm sorry we're good whatever and I think they should have aired more of it too because the finale seemed super rushed okay so it's the next morning and Natalie is finally up out of here she's leaving she's going home goodbye and unfortunately, Donald's leaving too. See, we like Donald. Why didn't you come in acting like Donald? Staying out of the mess. Keep it to yourself. Staying in your place. Anyway, she's going back home. And in Amir's confessional, he said that he feels like his fun is leaving. And that now that she's not here in the house, he has to basically censor himself so that he doesn't get in, get into any trouble and I'm just like why are you in a relationship with her why are you in a relationship period if you feel like you need to be censoring yourself when you're not in her presence it doesn't what is going on what's going on so I was just so I'm just so completely over the two of them if y'all can't tell already I'm over them. They have gotten on my last nerve. Both of them, we don't need to see them anymore. Season three, Martha's Vineyard, we don't need to see the two of them anymore. So finally, Alex is gonna have his event, which is gonna be a um, fill the space event, which is something that he does in New York. And basically what they're gonna be doing is playing, he's gonna be playing music with his brother and his one of his bandmates, I guess and the other housemates are going to be like painting while he's doing that and they're doing it on the beach the music was nice i didn't mind it at all i thought it was pretty good i thought it was a cute little event it was quick it was real quick though i feel like his event isn't going to be as memorable as the other events that we've seen like how you know nick had his party Jordan had her freak me like we're gonna remember those events but his is gonna like waver to the background because it was so quick and rushed and I think that's on production honestly so we see Summer having a conversation with Preston and Jordan and she feels that she needs to go home even though there's only two days left she needs to go home before everyone else and heal 
she's another one that's not wrapped too tight um uh she i guess she's having some sort of revelation about her life now in this moment two days before the end of the trip that she needs to go home and um to be honest you should have been went home as soon as you put your hands on the on um noel or even before that you should have been went home because you can't keep your hands to yourself if mariah had to go home for doing this you should have been went home and see i really don't want to take it to a colorism place but that's what it's giving me let's just look at the facts that's what it's giving me she should have been gone home she should have been asked to pack her bags and go home for her behavior this season it's been ugly she's getting her um stuff together apologizing to everyone and noelle does not want to talk to her at all and they're roommates so they're going to be seeing each other when they go back to new york but um i guess we could say that that friendship is fractured at this point but i don't know if it's because she noelle is leaning more towards having a friendship with bria or what but it's not looking too good for the two of them i found it very interesting that bria was saying that for the next next summer she was gonna have milo in school like in a boarding school but isn't he supposed to be your emotional support animal I thought he was supposed to be with you all the time because you need him for emotional support. Am I the only one? Please don't tell me I'm the only one. They're all at the pool and somehow Milo goes missing. And you know when, you're, when, you can't, when you're calling your dog and you, get, you don't hear them, you can't see them and too much time goes by, you start to panic because you don't know what they've gotten into. You don't know if something's gotten to them you don't know where they are like what's going on are they okay so she's panicking everyone's running around looking for him and in a lapse time of 36 minutes milo shows up running running through the field like he just like he's been having the time of his life he went off and did whatever he wanted to do for that 36 minutes and for a pet owner not being able to find your dog for 36 minutes is a very long time very long time and it's scary and nerve-wracking but you should have been watching your dog why are you not watching him and y'all are outside where all this vegetation is and all these trees and stuff he he could have gotten lost a good thing dogs have that sharp nose but he could have gotten lost or something could have swooped down and eaten him. Watch your dog. We get this random scene of Amir with an attitude. And he basically wants to know why all the girls are talking about his girlfriend behind her back. She's not here to defend herself and whatnot. It's because your girlfriend is an agent of chaos. That's why. She stirred up all this drama. And now that she's gone, there's dissonance in the house. There's thick tension in the house because of her. Granted, Bria, Shanice, and Noel shouldn't have been talking about Alex behind his back. They were wrong for that, and they were wrong for doing it in front of Natalie. But there's accountability that can be taken on both sides. At this point, I'm so sick of uh, Natalie. I'm sick of saying her name. I'm sick of having to recap her. Y'all know what it is with her. I don't want to see her again on my screen. Over her. Like, I just have a huge issue with people that act like they're so much better than black people and have their nose put up towards black people, but love to either emulate the culture, be in the mix of the culture, be with our men, and like to stir up stuff. You have no place here. Like I said, I can't stand her. Can't stand her. Like, I'm just so, like, over her that I can't even take it anymore. I can't take it. But the girls, they have responsibility in this as well. So, Bria and Amir are going back and forth. They are, like, 
he's starting to yell at her at this point. Alex has a conversation with Nick later. Oh wait, no. Some of the housemates go bike riding and Alex was saying he doesn't like that, you know, Amir was arguing with Bria. He doesn't like the whole men arguing with women thing. He feels that he should have walked away at a certain point because they all know how Bria gets. This doesn't excuse her behavior. It does not. She's wrong. She's completely and totally ridiculous. But there was a better way for him to handle the situation. And he kind of agreed. And yeah, he's whatever. I, as y'all can see, I am so over Amir. The girls stayed, some of the girls stayed in the kitchen and were talking and stuff. And Bria said that she doesn't think that Simon is her soulmate. Can't wait for him to watch this. Because she seems to think that, you know, I'll probably marry him and we'll be together and, and have kids and stuff. Will you? After he sees this, will you? There's got to be some sort of like censorship. You know you're on TV. You know you're on TV. She actually didn't even want production to play this on TV because in her confessional, she was like, y'all aren't going to play the, the soulmate thing, right? Why would they not? She said that her soulmate is somewhere in Tribeca. Maybe you should go off and figure out who that is because I don't think Simon's going to appreciate this at all. So at the last dinner, the night before everyone's leaving, they played this imitation game where one housemate has to act like another and they have to guess who they're imitating and this was the point where you can see like these people like they're friends and they actually know each other because they did some pretty spot on um they did some pretty spot on imitations so noel imitated alex preston imitated noel amir imitated shanice alex imitated preston and bria imitated Jordan so yeah it was cute cute enough they give their final thoughts on you know the trip and whatnot and Amir and Bria apologize to each other and they they basically they just want to move on from the situation and then Jordan says basically in so many words that she wants to live her life more unapolog unapologetically so cute I guess not sure what she means, but we hear you. We got you. So it's the last day, the last morning. Y'all see how I've rushed through? That, that's how the episode went. It's not me. The episode literally went like this. So it's the last morning and everyone's getting ready to go home. And they all do a final confessional together. And, you know, just basically... It's their little send off and I guess they can't wait for next summer. I really hope they do come back for a third season because I like seeing people that look like me win. I believe that we deserve a spot on TV, on this show. It deserves to be on the airways. We deserve to be seen. There are some people that I don't think should be back on the show. I've expressed it many times. Many times throughout this video, so get on it, Bravo. But they all leave the house, we see everyone go home, and then six months later, we see that Jasmine had the baby, so that was really cute. And we see Silas um, is finally able to come home and be with her. He came like 16 hours after she had the baby, so it was really nice to see them together and they're like happy family. I wonder if she's going to come back. I know she's probably not going to bring the baby, but... I don't know if she's going to be able to spend two weeks away from her baby because she's a new mom. The baby will be older but still young. So I don't know if she's going to come back or not. We'll see. We'll see. But I would love to know what y'all thought about these episodes. Leave some comments down below. Again, sorry for my absence. My bad. I'm here though. Hello. Hello world. I'm here. But 
don't forget to subscribe to my channel like the video like i said comment down below and i'll see y'all in the next one bye